Sounds like you're starting to get familiar with the area. Paimon's amazed every time we see the wall of Samiel. How can a wall this tall even exist? It's almost unreal. I know what you mean. I had the same question every time I walked this way when I was a kid. Also, why is this high wall here? And can a wall really block sandstorms? It was only after I grew up that I realized the wall of Samiel isn't just there to keep out the sandstorms. It serves a more important purpose, keeping out people like us. Sumeru is run by wise and mighty sages. To them, us desert dwellers are nothing but tools that can be used and discarded at their whim. We're cheap labor, like livestock, but easier to control. Nothing more. Even if a child from the desert got the chance to obtain an Akasha terminal, almost all their requests for knowledge would be denied. The Academia believes we're underserving. Geniuses like Sataria are one in a million. The other children never get a single chance to try and rewrite their fate even though the Academia knows very well that we're humans, just as they are. That's terrible! I would tear down this wall with my own hands if I could. Hey, Thea. Uh, you're not thinking about doing anything scary, are you? Uh, no, not at all. This place just gets me thinking, that's all. Besides, we're here to procure information, aren't we? Yep! We gotta catch those- Shh! Caravan Rebot is crawling with people, so be careful what you say. We don't want anyone to find out what we're here for. Our mission started the moment we arrived here. Let's go check out the tavern, maybe we'll find someone I know. Just our luck. None of them are here today. You mean, you don't see anyone you know? Dia, is that you? <laughs> what a coincidence. You here for a drink too? Hmm? Zaki? <laughs> Finally, a friendly face. Oh, and who do you have with you here? Guests from another land? Hello, hello! I'm Zaki. Dia's, uh, how would you put it? Drinking buddy? <laughs> We've had drinks together a few times. You could say we go back a ways. Anyway, as far as my friends here, they aren't too shabby, are they? You rarely see any outlander so friendly and respectful nowadays. Absolutely. <laughs> Much better than those people on the other side of the wall. So, Dia, are you looking for someone? Yeah. Have you seen Enger, Delavar, or Jabari recently? Of course I have. Matter of fact, we were all here drinking together just a few days ago. I've got a spice trading deal from another nation. I thought maybe Delavar and his friends might be interested. Know where I could find him? Ah, how thoughtful of you. Then I assume you also know that Delavar's been having a hard time making ends meet these days. So, you came here to help him out? Hey, keep it down. Let's just say I prefer to keep this deal a secret. Y'all at Caravan Rebot are like family. If there's more to be made, why not do it together? Besides, Delavar and his friends have muscle. They'd be a good fit for escorting the goods. <laughs> yes, how considerate of you. Delavar's my friend too, so of course I can take you to him. Come with me.
there yet? Yep. This is the place. This place is practically deserted. What are they doing in a place like this? <laughs> Why don't you take a guess? Go on. A wild stab in the dark. <laughs> You're like lambs to the slaughter. What's this all about, Zaki? Come on, Dia. You really think we didn't hear about what you said back in Aru village? The boys have kept a close eye on you from the moment you set foot there. Not only do I know that you're looking for Delavar, I also know that you've teamed up with people from the Academia to look for the missing scholars. So, you've been watching us from the very beginning? And you left the strongest one in the village, didn't you? Who do you think you are? You really thought we'd fall for your little business deal nonsense? So you and Delavar have been partners all along. <laughs> Dia, I guess it's only natural for a traveling mercenary like you to be out of the loop. Those of us who hang around the tavern have stronger bonds than you think. But you got one thing right. We're all looking forward to an uprising in Sumeru. There's nothing more we'd like to see than the desert folk overthrowing the Academia. If that's the case, then I'm sure Delavar wouldn't miss a second of it. I'll be honest with you. If it weren't for what you said in the village, your little monologue about the Wall of Samuel would have convinced me that you're one of us. Delavar. And Enger. You're here too, huh? Long time no see, Miss Mercenary. You should have known the traitors are what us followers of King Deshret despise the most. Dia, I thought that you, a fellow desert dweller, would understand why King Deshret is greater than the Dendro Archon. Little did I know, you don't deserve to join us. <laughs> yeah, gee, what a missed opportunity. Adopting radical views and kidnapping innocent scholars, all because of some baseless rumors. <laughs> Anything else I'm missing out on? See? There you have it. Mercenaries are just a bunch of faithless scum with only one thing on their minds. Mora. Pathetic. You're all like a pack of street rats. You're not wrong. Mercenaries are driven by Mora, and my faith lies with whoever's paying me. As long as there's a profit to be made, anyone can become my friend. Enough talking! Get him! <laughs> Just as I expected. Let's teach him a lesson, Traveler. Yes, yes, yes. New new Share my knowledge. Inazuma shines eternal. Shine down. Impossible. How could you? So, what do you think about your meticulous network now, Zaki? How did you say it? It's only natural for a traveling mercenary like me to be out of the loop. I'm guessing your informant told you that I'm just an incompetent merc with no real fighting skills, correct? I mean, that is what I said after all. And of course you would believe everything he reported. The only thing you know about me is that I'm a mercenary, but you've never seen me in action. Even though you heard we went to handle monsters together, you believed that Candace was the only one doing all the real fighting. That so-called Flame Mane is just a fraud. She admitted it herself. She just uses her connections to gain the trust of others. That's what you thought, right? Ugh. You lied in the village because you figured that we'd have people watching you. And you were stupid enough to fall for it. I figured as much the first time we drank together. You all thought you were so smart. Pathetic. Okay, that should be all of them. Whoa! 
so you've been planning this since we were in Aru Village? No task can be done without preparation. I just happened to notice a couple suspicious-looking people while you were out investigating. Oh, but instead of catching them right away, you let them report back! Those two who were snooping around were just a couple small fries. If we want to get the real catch, we have to be patient and give it some time. Oh! You mean the funny name she mentioned back in Uncle Ampu's house? The Wide-Eyed Butcher, Scarbrittle Bandit, uh, um, uh, Paimon can't remember them all. That's just a bunch of drunk talk. Enger and Delavar like to talk themselves up when they're drinking. Enger the Wide-Eyed Butcher and Delavar the Scar-Riddled Bandit are the nicknames they came up with for themselves. Alcohol has a way of making people share what they really think. So Enger and Delavar are always rambling in the tavern about how King Deshred is a superior deity. What about Zaki? He's just a numbskull who fell right into our trap. Zaki was probably the best hidden of them all. My initial plan was to find Delavar first, and then try to track him down. That's what you wanted to ask when we were at Uncle Anpu's house, right? Jabari is one of the villagers you talked to. You know. The one who wanted to treat Isak and his grandpa to some food. Wait, so he's a radical too? No, he isn't. I just needed to tack on a random villager name to make the eavesdropper think that I was making some wild guesses based on my impressions. Wow, what a genius idea! Well, that's an expert mercenary for ya! Ah, you're too kind. It was straight from the usual playbook, if I'm honest. So... That thing you were saying before, is it really true? Hmm? About what? About how mercenaries only care about Mora, and that anyone's a friend as long as there's a profit. Does that bother you? What makes you so sure? Uh... Dia, do you dislike the Dendro Archon like the other desert folk? <laughs> you two are pretty sharp. No, I don't have anything against the Dendro Archon. I've heard a lot of nice things about the Lesser Lord from Dunyarzad. I can understand her devotion and gratitude. Dunyarzad's just an ordinary person. There's no way a god would be so involved in the lives of everyday people, unless they were truly compassionate. I've begun to realize that the Sages are behind everything that's happened recently. The Radical's blind belief in King Deshret, making the Dendro Archon out to be an enemy. Tch, it's all the Academia's trickery. But I see through it all. And unlike them, I can never be hostile towards anyone who's never done anything wrong. Dia. Anyway, looks like we're done with business here. Traveler, lend me a hand. Let's tie him up and bring him to the village. This should be all of them. I'll let you take it from here. All right. I'll be in touch. Until then, please stand by. Candace, do you need any help? Candace will be okay on her own. I trust her, so you can too. She's been guarding Aru Village for quite some time now. If anyone is qualified to question the offenders, it's her. While I'm questioning them, why don't you pass some time by exploring the area? I'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, Traveler. As for these idiots, let's just hope they live to see another day. You heard the question! Now answer me! Ah! Candace is an expert at dealing with people like this. All we have to do is wait for her word. <laughs> <laughs> 